2022, U.S. banks are at risk, with nearly $900 billion in total assets. The majority of those banks are smaller lenders, with less than $10 billion in assets each. Six Hold on, ladies and gentlemen. I'm showing you this uh, because it's important. They're talking about all these banks due to fail. Due to fail. I thought they were too big to fail. Didn't they just receive a bailout in 2009? Didn't that bring them to even to where all of their books were balanced? 2009? So how is it 2024 and they're all back in the same plight they were in prior? Remember the mortgage crisis because of those deadbeat borrowers? Well, if that's the case, then what's their problem now? They're incompetent. They get the fractional reserve bank game. They get to practice fractional reserve banking. How are they in crisis? They're not. They just said that they are. Because they get bailouts and they get to control the economy. They get to control you. So please pay attention. The lawsuit that was filed. As long as you have a mortgage, a car loan, or a student loan, as long as you've ever mailed out, given a promissory note to any institution, any person, as long as you've ever sent out any money order and or bill of exchange and or bond and or, then you can join the lawsuit. The lawsuit's all about the fact that they didn't give us access to the monies they promised that they took the gold and they took away our ability to make and earn a living, which we have that as a right. That's what the lawsuit basically is saying. So you can join. All you got to do is go and watch the video talking about the lawsuit. Hold on. Let me point it out to you because I don't remember the name. I know it talks about the 400 quadrillion dollars or something like that. 400 billion dollars ain't gold. And I believe this is a lawsuit. Uh... $400 billion lawsuit. I think that's it right there. Three minutes and two seconds. All you do, it was June 4th because it was filed on June 3rd. Ladies and gentlemen, June 4th video. Three minutes and two seconds. Look at the description. So many people watched the video and didn't even look at the description. Shame on y'all. All right. And all you got to do is mail off the letter. And then guess what? Start doing your 1099Cs. Wait, wait. Hold on a minute. Hold on. We got to do this because. Some people just don't, they, they don't keep up. They don't keep up. Ladies and gentlemen, we are constantly moving. Okay. So, explanation concerning presumption. No, it's not the presumption one. No, it is. Oh, sorry. It's this right here. This video literally tells you what to do with the tax credits, the $400 billion tax credits. It tells you how to do the 1099Cs and what will be necessary. It explains exactly what tax credits are and how they work. See, the banks are saying they're in trouble, but they're not in trouble. They get to write off all that debt. They're not in trouble, people. What they want to do is they want to perpetuate getting into the new system. What system are we talking about? Well, we're not talking about the new order of things. No, we're talking about the new financial system, the electronic funds, electronic IDs, electronic information. That's the system they're going into. I'm sorry, pay attention. That's the direction they're headed in. Ladies and gentlemen, you want to be prepared. So go ahead and get your tax credits. You can do electronically. If you go online, you can do electronically. Pay attention. $9,999,999.99 at a time against an entity. You have 150 to choose from because they're all brought in as co-conspirators. Pay attention, co-conspirators. That means that they're individually liable. We don't have to actually say in the suit that they're individually liable. We just have to bring up RICO and co-conspirators. Ta-da! Techniques. Now, what if the court throws it out? Doesn't matter. We have a bona fide claim on the record. It's a petition for redress. Ta-da! You have the right to redress. You have the right to reparations. You have the right to compensation. Look up the word redress. You have the right to the correction of wrongs. So technically, the courts have no jurisdiction. But they're going to they're gonna act and do what they do because that's what they do. But we don't care. You guys let me handle the suit. Go and get your credits taken care of. So the two videos, the fourth and the ninth, 
take a look at this one. This is your video. This is, whew, that's an hour and six minutes long. That means you got some attention to be paying. It's going to cost you for that one because that's a lot of information. A lot of information. All right, let's get back to this, um, the bank failure thing. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, currently the United States has manipulated the finances and the position of the United States. They claim that unemployment is low, but we know that unemployment is not low. Look at the homeless crisis. Sorry. If unemployment was so low, why are there so many homeless people on the street? Why is Seattle in the condition it's in? Why is Oakland in the condition it's in? Why is Los Angeles in the condition it's in? If there was employment, a plentiful like they're claiming, then you wouldn't see so many people struggling every day. They are lying. The reason why there was a bump in jobs is because most of those are part-time jobs. But remember, all of the people who got laid off because they raised the minimum wage in California, especially the Los Angeles County area, when they did that, the companies had no other choice but to lay people off. So this is a lie talking about their jobs are plentiful. That's a lie, everyone. I just wish everybody would catch on to it because the United States came in. I told, told everybody in our meetings, I said, hey, they're reporting the numbers wrong. It's impossible for us to be doing this good. Gas prices are still going up at the time they were going up. I said, it's impossible for them to say inflation is down. I said, but they do it every election year. They inflate the numbers to make the so-called incumbent president look good. And then what do they do right after that? They put out the real numbers. Well, that's what happened last week. And that was a bump in the market, and it literally did cause a bump. Well, they're about to do the same thing this week, another bump. They're going to make a correction regarding numbers. And then two weeks from now, they're going to make a correction regarding the numbers they put out last week. Just wait and see. They do it. It happens every four years, everyone. Four more years. Every four years it happens because... This is the United States. The United States knows that they can put that junk out on the news and you guys will believe it because you are gullible. I'm talking to the American people, same ones the president is always talking to. Yep, he knows that you people are gullible. You all thought Trump is a Captain save -a I mean a Captain save -a market Captain save -a market Trump, he ain't out there to save nobody but himself. He has never done anything for anybody but himself. If it wasn't advantageous for him, he didn't do it. Go back and take a look at his presidency. Everything he did was to benefit him. He didn't lower taxes for you. He lowered taxes for businesses. Everything he did was to benefit him. He is selfish. I'm not talking about him, against him, or anything. I don't care about the man. But I do know that he is selfish. Why? It's always me, 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 as if he's getting ready to practice for something. Okay? Every time he talks, it's about him. Sounds familiar? Your mama. Okay. And so the people who are donating money to his campaign, donating money to his legal fund, where's your money going? Where's your money going? The lawyers are getting paid. They're, they're happy. They're telling them, you need to pay us more money. You need to pay us more money. You need to pay us more money. And he's doing it. Now, of course, he gets to write this stuff off. But he's doing it. Now, by the way, oh, by the way, by the, by, the, by the way, when you do your tax credits, the $400 billion for each client, for that client, but each claimant, each uh, defendant, when you do the $400 billion for each defendant and you write that junk off, it's a business expense for this year, so you get to write it off again next year. And it's a business expense for that year, and you get to write it off again for the next year. It's perpetual. I know y'all don't see it. That's why you got to watch that video because it does explain it from A to Z. All right. Got to go. I hope y'all understand. If y'all don't understand, then you'll never know what's going on in the world because the banks are claiming another crisis. And it hasn't even been, pay attention, 15 years. Well, technically, it is 15 years. Yeah, technically, it is 15 years. 2009 to 2024. It's 15 years. So how could the banks be doing so bad when they got all of these forbearances and bells? Well, we're because we had the, the moratorium. The moratorium wasn't against banks. 
they're still foreclosing on people. But remember, they still got the fractional reserve. Every loan that they received was a deposit. They got the fractional reserve, every promissory note, every bill of exchange. Even if they told you that your bill of exchange was a piece of junk, Congress took and made a law in 2003. It's called the 21st Century Check Act or the 21st Check Act. In 2003, Congress basically says, oh, no, you don't have to send that back to them. Just take and send them a piece of paper called legal check. And they send you that back and they deposit the one that you gave them. That's what the banks have been doing. Every instrument you give them, they convert it into a commercial instrument. It's called eligible papers. And when they do that, they get to receive the monies fractional reserved. And they get to reserve it and refractionalize it and reserve it and fractionalize it and reserve it to the point where there is no crisis. They just want you to believe that. Remember, many of these banks that are getting ready to shut down are the small banks, the ones the Federal Reserve won't lend money to, so now they're stuck. Now they got to rely on the monthly payments by the people who are not paying because they're out of work. So that's why those banks are struggling. See, the big banks are only lending to each other and giving loans to each other. They're not giving loans to the small banks. That's why the small banks are in trouble. If you don't believe me, go and ask one of them. How many loans did you ask for last year that the Federal Reserve say, no, we ain't giving y'all no money? How many advancements did you ask for last year? And they said, no, we ain't giving y'all no money. How many of you small banks said to the Federal Reserve, hey, we're going to go out of business if you don't give us any money? And they said, well, that's too bad, homie. You should have... Knew the job was dangerous before you took it, but we ain't giving y'all no more money. How many of them is there? That's one of those say what? That's all you got to do is pay attention. This is their game. This is their pool room. This is their pool stick. This is their pool table, comma, they are setting. You see, I do the voice recognition all the time. I just said comma in the middle of a conversation. They are setting the rules. They are telling you what you get to do next, what you don't get to do, how you get to do it, when you get to do it, why you get to do it. They are controlling the horizontal, the vertical, and the resolution. So don't fall for the okie doke, people. This is all a lie right here. All right, hey, you guys take care. We'll talk soon. Have a good one.